just pop up some stuff. Okay. Okay. All right. How many monitors do I have? I have two monitors. <laughs> Definitely Asian. Yeah, I was checking out the color of the match, you guys. You guys are hilarious. Oh, who is that? Is that um? Is that uh? Is that is that Pete? Is that Peter? P Peter Parker? That's that's Peter Parker, right? Am I am I wrong, Chad? Isn't isn't that um? Is isn't that? Yeah, Peter Parker TV, right? Cool, cool, cool. No, that's not Edison. That's um. Uh, I, I was I was in their Discord last night. It's so embarrassing that I don't remember. It's um. L l let me see. It, it is uh. It is um. Peter Park, P Peter Park, Peter Park TV. That's who it is. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay, I'll start. I'll start the voice call, you guys. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Why? 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 Why did Peter run away? Um, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's know. all good. I was just watching the stream because he, he was in the, he was in the Discord last night. We were all like watching watching like the anime and stuff. So oh. it was just funny. Um, oh, Peter. Mm. He's he's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's 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 all good. It's all good. Yeah, it's, I'm just kind of joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. Uh, first thing, what is your uh, username on chess.com? Oh, I um, actually don't know. My username know. is, shouldn't it, I think it's just Foosley. I think F U S L I E. I think so. Are you on live chess? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, uh, chess.com, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think so. Okay. It should be. Yes, it is. It's the thing you, next to my flag and diamond. Right? right, so actually click on the play button and click on live chess. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay, play live chess. Yeah, so it's on the left hand side. So are you are you there now? Yes. Okay. Um Okay, all right. So let me let me just do this. I, I think the f first question is did you learn any any um any openings yesterday from uh from Chiyu? Um yes. Uh I learned one. Okay, I kind of forgot it, but I did learn something. Oh frick! I d I didn't. I, I, she taught me something, but I I think I forgot the opening. But I oh. do remember a lot of things that she taught me. I just focused all of my energy on the on defense. Okay. Pride um, lover. Pride lover. Oh, so she taught you to, to play the Italian. Okay. All right. Okay. So yes. that's fine. <laughs> um. Okay. Let me just start this. I. I think the way that I'll do this then is I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll try to give you some preparation from the white side because tomorrow I think in your first 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 match you are going to be white I believe if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm. Okay. I'm better at going first. Right. So generally speaking, in, in the game of chess, you want to with with white when you get the first move, you try to uh, you try to attack as much as you can. Okay. Um. Okay. So all right. So so what's your first move? Um. I like to do um like this Th is this what uh is what she showed you mm, no she didn't tell me specifically like, okay fine then, then then let's scrap it all and we'll start we'll start from scratch okay Wait, is um that bad to do that first no it's a great first move there are oh, okay. there are many good first moves so let's just scrap everything and we'll start we'll start from scratch okay so okay. You're playing against E Rob tomorrow with the white pieces, so yes. I'm going to recommend that you do start with this pawn push. Um, okay. And now there are many many replies that your opponent can play, but as I've told many streamers, let's just say Black plays a random move on the side of the board. If you have the opportunity, you want to take advantage of the center where you can get these two pawns on these two middle squares. Yep. If you have the opportunity. So normally, when you whether you push the pawn in front of the queen or the king, the idea is essentially the same. You want to get these two pawns next to each other because they take a lot of space in the central squares. Got it. So, okay, so if you're gonna start with D4, all right, so here, normally the way your opponent will respond to this move is they will prevent you from getting the second pawn in the center. So let's say black pushes this pawn here to stop you from uh, pushing the pawn in the center. Right, um, then I like to do this. Okay, um, can I suggest something a little bit different? Okay. 
No, that, that's fine. But I, I just I want to kind of give you a very straightforward idea of something that you can play that will uh, that I think will will work quite re quite well for one game. Okay. So I'm going to recommend that you bring this bishop out here to f4. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Why'd you say really? Oh, I'm just I never put like, my bishop that early. I'm but. I, I, yeah, that, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Normally, the way you want to develop your pieces at the start of the game here would be to move your bishop and your knight here next to your king and castle your king out of the center of the board. Right. So in, in this case, um, if you were to push this pawn, you can move your bishop and move your knight and get your king out of the middle of the board. Oh, okay. But the reason I'm going to recommend that you play this move is let's say your opponent moves a knight. And you push this pawn. Do you see a difference between this position and the previous position that I showed you? Um, so, so okay, just look at this position for one second. Yeah. And now let me go back to this position. Do you see a difference? Where, Where's... Wait, this is the other position? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, this position... The other position has a bishop. Right. So, so let's say I, I move my knight here. Like, the oh. difference between this one and this one... Is that in this one your bishop is outside of these pawns so your bishop actually can can attack a lot of pieces on this long diagonal right whereas in this one your bishop is behind the pawn so the bishop doesn't really have any squares from which it can attack it's not an active piece so this is more you're saying to go more offensive like cause yes because I'm, I'm right yeah. so i should oh okay so okay, i mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh um two taught me a lot of defense yesterday um, and so I'm, I'm not sure how to go on the offense as much, but well, the, I, the plan that I'm going to give you is, is pretty, uh, is, is pretty straightforward. I, I think you want to try to attack. It's going to give you the, the best opportunity to, opportunities to win. Okay. So let's say your opponent moves a knight here. What's mm -hmm. the, now again, you got the bishop out, out at the start. So how do you want to bring those pieces like your bishop and your knight and your, your king into the game? Uh, move pawn to e Right. Exactly. So now let's say your opponent pushes the pawn to develop his bishop. Right. So now, now you want to, again, get this bishop and this knight into the game. Um, does it, I guess, oh, okay. Well, I would probably uh, move my knight from here. Okay, so this is a reasonable, th actually, this move is a good move, but you probably should play the other order first so that you, you don't, get confused, which is to bring the bishop out. Okay. To and defend the, the center squares. Right. And also you have ideas to attack this pawn down here on um, this h7 square down the line because your bishop okay. is, is targeting it from a distance. Whereas if you put the bishop on this square, the bishop isn't really attacking anything specifically. Right. Okay. So, so you it, would rec recommend pushing it uh okay but but i'm attacking this pawn but the rook is defending it so right it's so of... it's it's not so much about attacking immediately at the start of the game i would say in the first 10 moves of the game you don't really want to be thinking about trying to attack your opponent immediately but you want to put your pieces on the squares where down the road you will be able to attack okay so this is just a developing move now let's say your opponent moves the bishop here so yeah. now you want to finish your development you want to get this king out of the middle of the board so where would you move your knight? Um, I would move it here. Good. And now after black castles? Then I would castle too. Right, exactly. And now the, the way that you want to continue with your development, let, let's just say black pushes this pawn here to try and attack your pawn, is to never capture this pawn. So keep in mind when you develop your bishops and you get your king out of this out of the center of the board, you, you want to keep your pawns, you want to keep this... Uh, What's it like? I don't know, this pawn chain or staircase or whatever you want to call it. Um, right. You want to keep it intact. You don't want to trade. You don't want to take this pawn. Okay. So the move so, you would play here is push this pawn. Okay. I thought of that too. Okay. And I, I don't know what you would call this. I mean, with this these pawns and this, this bishop behind it. But basically, you want these pawns, these, these pawns uh, right around your bishop just controlling everything. So am I going for like this exact formation? Is this yes, like... you are. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay, but what if Erob watches this and is prepared for it? Well, he can prepare for it, but you can still do the setup no matter what. Okay. Unless he's going to do something really bad and then he'll just lose. Okay. 
I, I, I was spying on his coaching sessions and then the, his coach was trying to teach him some cheesy, like some cheese thing, like where he, he, he like pulls out his bishop and then his queen and then like checks me, checkmates me in like four turns. Well, or unfortunately for E Rob, he's going to be playing with the black pieces tomorrow. So he can't do the four move checkmate. Um, so <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's actually really funny to hear. Uh, but you, you, because you have the white pieces, he, he can't really do that. Uh, there's just there's no way of doing it. So so what what I want to say is you want to get the setup where you put these bishops on these two squares and you create this this big pawn formation. It's like pyramid. Um, and then you want to bring your knight to this square. So let me go back to the start. Let's I, I want to see if you you have this kind of kind of down. I know it's, it's pretty quick, but I just want to see if you if you have down. So let's say I move this pawn. OK, then you said to move this out here right exactly so you, again you want to develop your pieces but you want to get the bishop outside of these pawns first so that it can then target everything as opposed to being stuck on the um as opposed to being stuck on the original square right um and then so i'll play um, this move okay and then i play this move exactly and so now i go here and then i play this move mm -hmm. and then i go here Mm -hmm. and then i go oh, and then i go here exactly and now i push the pawn because i want to i want to get rid of these pawns and i defend him exactly okay so this is a this is a good starting point um so now i'm going to do i'm going to just basically show a bunch of different setups and then after that i can g give you more more advanced techniques past this basic setup but the key is just to get this basic setup so let's say your opponent plays here at the beginning yeah um so i guess would I still play the bishop? Mm -hmm. So, okay. so when I when I try to, to to help help you guys out with sort of these opening setups, it's stuff that basically will fit and work against almost anything that your opponent tries to do at the start of the game. Um, so, so basically, what works against that pawn push is also going to work against this knight push. So, let's say I push this pawn. Okay. Uh, then I would. Um, I, yep. Exactly. Now, let me try something different. Let me push this pawn here. Okay, you're pushing that pawn, so I would maybe do this order first. Yeah, okay, you, you understand everything. Um, yeah, the, yeah, basically, whenever your opponent tries to attack these pawns here, you want, you want to make sure you get this big pyramid formation. And, um, and then again, let's just say I do this. What's your next move? Oh, uh, you're attacking. Um, oh, I see. Uh, my next move would be between the bishop and the knight. Um, now is it the bishop or is it the knight? Oh, bishop, maybe? Oh, the... mm -hmm. Right, very good. And now I do this. And then I do this. Yeah, a castle. And a castle. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Okay, this this is uh this is interesting. I wasn't expecting you to remember this so so easily. Um, it's, 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 oh, it's because it's like a, a pawn hat. It's like, <laughs> it's oh, like wait, a, wait, sorry. Uh, You're saying this, this, the, it's like, sorry, what? Yeah. Like it looks like, or sorry, it looks like a, the bishop is wearing like a, a hat of pawns. <laughs> so it's easy to remember this structure. And okay. Then, and then, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've heard a lot of different, like people are <laughs> calling all sorts of things, different things all over the place. So it's, um, yeah. Pawn hat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, pawn hat. Like. Feels dank, man. Do you know that emo or? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I say that all the time. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, but that that that's good. Okay, so so basically, let me think. Then I, I really wasn't expecting you to rem remember this so easily. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to try to um, uh, do something different. So now what I'm going to do is after you move the bishop, I'm going to try right away to attack your pawn here. Okay. Okay. Um. So then originally the move was to build or mm -hmm. no this okay. this is good actually yeah. this is very very good because what i was expecting you to say was to push this pawn but because it's so early in the game and you've moved your bishop right away you actually uh you actually do push this pawn because if we go back let me just let me i'm gonna go a little bit quicker but let's say you go back to this position uh mm -hmm. you in all these other positions you would protect the pawn by pushing this one ahead Right, but pushing the one on e to e3 also protects him, right? And it protects the bishop, so that's why we would do that. Right, it's just it's just like a very much a five head move because 
what you're supposed to say as a beginner is you're supposed to supposed to say I'm going to play C3 because it's uh, because it's what you were doing in the other two positions. It was okay. Maybe now I've forgotten the order of things. <laughs> I thought I did this first. Uh, okay, okay. No, no, you, you do play E3. What, what, basically, what I'm saying, though, is I'm saying you're finding the right move, but I'm expecting you as a beginner to come up with a different with, with, a, with a different thought process. So your thought process is very good. No, E3 is the correct move, okay? Okay, yep. 100%. You, you want to move the bishop and push the pawn on the next move. So, okay, now um, I'm going to try to... If, if I move the knight out here, what's your next move? Um, my next move would be to probably, well, you're not directly attacking anything with that knight, so that gives us the opportunity to push out the bishop. Oh, no, 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 I regret that. Wait, actually, no, no, I don't. I, I, I will stick by No, it's not right. Okay, maybe the, finish the hat. Exactly, yeah. So this is what you want to do, and now if I play this knight out? Um... If you play that knight, then I would, um, well, um, I guess I would still do that, the bishop here. Exactly. And if I push the pawn? Um, you push the pawn, then I push the, the... Right. So, so, so you understand the setup. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to, uh, stop you from getting what you want. So I'm going to move this queen out here right away to oh. sort of put pressure on both of these points right um so what i would do is well i'll tell you what to do because the move oh. is not it's it's not oh. an obvious move so in okay. this in this situation because white black is trying to attack right away towards your center and towards where your rook is you would actually make a gambit here and move your knight out oh what's a gambit a gambit is where you give up a pawn or you give up like a knight or a bishop and you don't get even value in return for it it's a is it a blunder basically or no i mean it, it it it's not a blunder because you're getting something in return you're gambiting a pawn but by gambiting the pawn what happens is in return you're you're going to get a lot of development so like let's say black i, I guess let's say black captures the pawn here mm -hmm. so your knight and your rook are under attack right so what would a like you want to think of a couple of possibilities that make some sense here. Um, I would move my rook here because then your queen, if he takes my rook, I take your queen. Right. But if we, if we, if we look at the position, which, which pieces of yours are under attack, which which what can your opponent capture? All of the pieces around it, the pawn, the knight, the rook. And the okay. So queen. let's, let's look at this. The queen protects the pawn and it protects the rook. Right. And black's queen cannot capture either the pawns or the rooks. So what is the piece of the black? Uh, what would black black capture here? If it's the black's knight. move. <clears throat> right. So, so what you should play here is you would play knight takes pawn. And now you see the knight's no longer under attack and your queen guards your rook. Got it. Okay. So that's a gambit or that's just... It's close to a gambit. What... Like, the way that you could also gamble this pawn is just move the knight here. So, I'm confused. Who is a gambit a good thing? It's a bad thing, right? No, I mean, I, I would say if you're... I, I guess it's a bad thing if you're playing as a really, really strong player, like a grandmaster. But in, in this sort of event, there are a lot of people who are going to play gambits where they, they give up, like, a pawn because they're trying to checkmate the king very quickly. Okay. But it, it, I don't don't worry about the terminology. It's not super. Okay. It's, su it's not super important. Um, right. so, so okay, so um, let's say Black brings the queen out. You bring this knight here. You're attacking this pawn, right? Right. Um, I'm confused why we brought out the knight there. Okay, so what what would you what move makes sense here? I don't know. I was thinking to move the pawn there. Um, mm hmm. Because if the you know the queen takes b three, then I have two guys who are defending it, so that would stop. Okay, you know what? You know what? Just just play this move then. This will be simpler to play actually, because you'll still get the the position that you want to get. So okay. okay, so bring this pawn out. Let me bring the knight here. Okay, and then um, I would say uh, I would. Oh, this is interesting because. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, now let's say your opponent captures here. Oh. Um, and actually, this is this is very important. When your opponent tries to exchange these pawns here, there's a very specific way you're going to capture. So you're always going to capture with this way, with this pawn um, on this e file. Okay. Um, and that's because if you were, to, why not from the left? The reason you won't capture this way is because your opponent will be able to push a pawn and, and check your king here. Oh, we got to defend the king. Okay. Right. So so the way that you should play this is capture this way. And actually, let me go back to the other, other position quickly. So when we got to, to this position, again, if your opponent ever captures this way, you capture. Right. Al always capture with this pawn. Um, and then I, I don't know what this would be called, but, but always capture with this, this pawn from the center. Okay. That so let, let's go back to this other one. Okay. So, so B3. Wait, would it matter if that happens after you've castled already? No, it, it, it doesn't matter. Just remember to always capture with this pawn in front of the king here. Okay. Always capture with pawn in front of the king. Okay. Right. Always capture this way. Don't, don't capture with this pawn. Okay. Um, and so you're saying I can play this opening like uh, almost in any situation. I just have to kind of adapt to if he does some weird stuff. Basically, yeah. Like the only weird thing that black can really do is try to push this pawn very early, uh, very early on. Because otherwise, you get your okay. Let me let me play some some random moves. Okay, let me do this. Okay. Um, then I would still support here. Okay. I will do this. What did you do? Oh, I, uh, oh, do you not see it? I pushed upon. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, that's fine. I would make that. Okay. Oh, oh actually there, I could have uh, done the Bishop thing too. Um, right. It, do it doesn't really matter what the order is specifically. Although actually here, if your opponent's threatening to push the pawn in the center, you want to make them, you, you want to prevent this first. Cause there, there really is no difference between moving your Bishop or moving your Knight. But your opponent wants to attack in the center immediately. So then I would this. So it attacks. That. Exactly. Yeah. And and the black can no longer push this pawn because if he pushes the pawn. Um. Yeah. Then I'll then I'll kill him or I eat him. Uh. Mm -hmm. And then that's a good opportunity for me to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, what what is the what is the pawn attacking here? Just just step back and think for a second. Oh oh oh. <laughs> okay, he's attacking the bishop. And so I need to um, add more defense, I think. So so wait a second. The pawn is attacking your bishop. So knights and bishops are worth three points. Pawns um, are worth one. Okay. Uh, knights. Um, I would just eat him. No, 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 no. Hold just on. just think. Think. There, there, okay. There's there's no rush. So 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 which which move makes the most sense here? Um. Moving my bishop back. <laughs> Wait, no. Um, uh, oh, oh, I could eat with my horsey. Well, you can actually eat with, with everything here. You can eat with your, your, your oh! knight, your bishop. You can eat with everything, but you should actually to just take with your pawn. Yeah. Okay. That's what I meant. Or that's what I see. And black can't recapture because then you just capture back. So, so, so th that, that's why um, your opponent, you want to stop your opponent from being able to attack you in the center of the board right away. Right. So that's why it's good to pull that bishop move is good. So the, the, your opponent really wants to attack this, this pawn hat formation or the, whatever, whatever you called it, <laughs> the hat, the hat, the hat, <laughs> the hat. Exactly. So, um, so it's only if your opponent is trying to can play this move that you try to prevent it with all, all of your forces. Only if they try to push out that. Right, but if they don't do that, if they just say move this knight out, then the order doesn't matter, because there's no longer a threat to push in the center. So now the order doesn't really matter. So what would your next move be? My next move would be. Um, wait, so you just move the knight? Uh, then my next move would be to to finish the hat. Right, exactly. Now I move this bishop. Uh, okay, that's fine. I'll just finish up my thing so I can. Okay. Castle. 
Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is exactly what I want to show you. So now I think what's most likely to happen in your match tomorrow against E-Rob is you're going to get something like, uh, something like, like this, you move your Bishop and you're, you're probably going to get this. So again, what's the next move? Okay. Uh, then I do. Oh, okay. Um, what do I do? Um, maybe bit, uh, Oh, just try to remember the, the theme that you were following. I just, uh, I'm trying to see if there's like an order that matters here. Um, so if you think about the order that mattered, the only time the order matters at the very start was if your opponent was basically trying to mess up your pawns or attack your pawns right away like this. Right. So other than that, um, does it, I would push. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd push the pawn. Here? Right. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So let me push this pawn. Then I would... Is uh, making the hat the first step? Or you can do any, any order here because there is no real threat. But yeah, I, I would recommend making the hat first, yes. Okay. I would definitely recommend this. Just to keep it very simple. Okay. Okay, so, so let's say I push this pawn. Right. Yeah, because he's defended this guy. And if I take? Oh, that's fine. Uh, I guess I would take with this. You, yeah. Right, exactly. And then you bring the knight out and you castle the king. Exactly. Okay, I get that. So, okay, so let's keep going a bit deeper then. Let's say your opponent brings a knight out. What's your next move? Okay, Um, then I bring out my knight. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to exchange with these bishops because I want okay. I want to get rid of your bishop. Sure. Um, but then I'm like, well, no. uh, oh, so one thing you don't want to do really is let, let me just give you an example is let's say your king is already castled here. You don't really want to create weaknesses around your king. Like you want to oh. keep these pawns very stable. You don't very oftentimes you want to push this pawn to create a square for your king, but you never almost never want to push the pawn that's right in front of your king. Okay. So just think about this position with the king and the three pawns. Ignore the rest of the pieces. The only pawn that you really ever want to push is this pawn on the side to create a square for your king. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. Um, my bad. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All good. Um, so the move. So you want to trade bishops. Yeah. Let me go back. I, w I went to the wrong position. Right. So here. Mm -hmm. So in this position, the correct move to play would be to drop your bishop back. Oh, I see. Instead of bringing the pawns forward to defend, you pull him back to defend. Right, because defend. now what happens if your opponent captures is you can yeah. Actually, this is an important thing as well. You, you want to capture with this pawn because you capture okay. towards the center of the board, basically. Towards where your king and queen are. This is the middle part of the board. Yep. That so you capture sense. this way, but also your rook is now active. You also keep a keep an eye on the black, black knight and the black rook and the black pawn. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's assume your opponent castles here. And now you castle, of course. Mm -hmm. Your opponent kind of wants to develop these pieces. Like, you've developed everything on one side of the board, right? Mm -hmm. So black wants to try to develop his pieces too. So let's say black pushes the pawn here. You want to bring uh, these pieces into the game. Right. So, I mean, um, I probably would push a pawn here. Well, uh, well, well, the thing, I guess the way of looking at it is that um, th if you push any of these pawns, like these pawns, it doesn't really activate your rook. Like you're very rarely going to use your rook on this line, like pushing a pawn all the way up the board. So you oh. really want the rook to have an open, kind of an open, open line. And normally um, where that occurs is where the pawns are, where the, where the pawn captures will be in the center of the board. So probably move the queen or the knight out of the way. Right. So you should move this knight here. So... Um, I guess I move it here. Okay, so this but... is also another concept is if you look at the black knights, they're they're moving towards the center part of the board. The, the, the center of the board is these two files this is where the queen and the king are to start the game. So yeah. you see the black knights are aiming towards the center of the board. Yeah, we don't want to move our knights to the end because they have less attacking power. Right, so and you they... almost always want to bring the knights towards the center of the board. Uh, like just you have that as a, like a mental rule. You always want the knights in the center of the board. Um, so yeah, so you move the knight here. Now let's say your opponent moves this bishop here. Um, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well then, ooh, 
So, uh, so the move that you should play here is bring this knight up. But, oh, um, I see because the bishop can take him, but then he, he can be taken with a pawn. So he's fine. He's protected. Right. Um, so, so the idea is basically what you, I'll just move my queen here to try and force you to get rid of this knight. Because I, I want to go takes, captures, and captures three times. So now what you would do here is you overprotect the knight with the pawns. Now you have two pawns in the center that protect it. Yep. And if black captures, let's just say black captures with this. Actually, let's say black captures with the knight. Then I would capture with my pawn. Right. And you, do you know what this term is? Oh, uh, like this term? Uh, actually, just this pawn. Do you know what this is called? Oh, forking. Right. So, so bishops and knights are worth three and pawns are worth one. So you're going to get either the bishop or the knight and you're giving away one pawn. So you'll be ahead by two. Oh, damn. So That's your like... opponent won't capture with the knight here. Right. So, uh, let's say I capture uh, this way. Yeah. If I do that, well, then they lose a bishop or I go this, um, mm -hmm. And I just, I won a bishop. Well, it's a bishop for a knight, so it's action, even trade. But you're doing very well here. Because, again, just thinking of the basics, with the, with the rooks, you want them on, like, open lines. And you'll see that right here, the rook is on an open line. Rook bros. Got to keep them together, right? Sorry, what? <laughs> rook bros. Rook bros. <laughs> like, because they got to, they want to hang out. That's how I remind myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone has their own way of remembering. So, so yeah, that's completely fine. But basically, you want it on, on something which is completely open. Okay. So, so yeah, let's let's keep going. So, now I'm going to move the knight here. So, you, your pieces are very well placed. Your bishop is bishops are pretty good. Um, they have a lot of targets. So, now, is there... What, what sort of moves would you think of in this position? Okay, what I would think is okay. Um, I would I'm looking to like connect the rook bros, mm -hmm. and then, um, but queen's in the way, so I might use this turn to see um if I'm not under attack. Then, uh, I don't think I'm. Oh, I am. But, uh, but no, I'm not really under attack here. Uh, without being defended, right? So then I might move my queen to defend, maybe a weak point, which is maybe my bishop. So I would go like that. That's an okay move, but your bishop isn't really weak. It's actually very nice here with all these pawns right around it. So one, one of the reasons that, that I mentioned early on to put the bishop here on this square instead of like one square up is because the bishop is eyeing something here. What, what, is, the, what is the bishop threatening? Uh, check here. Right. But if, if you were to take this pawn, then black just captures right away. Right. So what you want to so... do here is go for checkmate. So how do you go for checkmate? Whoa. Um, we could go for checkmate here. Okay. Um, well, I would put the pressure on with my queen and my bishop. Yeah, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so maybe I would move my queen like here. Yeah. So if I just play a random move. Then I go like this. Oh, oh, wait, is that not right? Oh, uh, oh, let me think. Wait, whose turn is it? It's white's white's turn. Oh, oh, okay. So, white's turn. Well, maybe I go like this, and then, and then you can you can play the moves, yeah. So this is checkmate, right? Uh, yeah. But why wasn't the other one checkmate? Well, if you take with the bishop, black can just move the king over one square. Oh, I see. I see. And then you and can then, still make a checkmate, but it, uh, that, oh, no, you, actually what oh, you okay. do here, if you go there, I capture, but what you should do is just move the Bishop back. And now you attack the King with check. And if you move the King, um, then I just, Oh, um, then I would try to think here. Exactly. So that's checkmate. So I beat Hikaru. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not quite but but anyway like this is what you want to do like when you when you play this opening you want to keep an eye down here and eventually try to bring a knight and bring your queen into the game yeah 
So this is this is very important. So let's let's go back. Okay. Okay. So okay, I'll, uh, whoops, sorry. I'll push the spawn. Okay. Oh, it's my turn. Mm-hmm. Oh, are we gonna? Okay. Um. So, well, I guess the first thing I do is, uh, yep, yeah, bishop. Okay. Then I would mm -hmm. build the hat. Okay. Right and okay, just. All right, nothing too weird. Fish the hat up. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll try to exchange the bishops. Um, and then I'm. Oh yeah, I, you're trying to do that, so I will. What can I do to stop it? I remember we just talked about this. Um. Oh, it wasn't the move the pawn because. Well, no, that wasn't it. Was it to move this back? Yeah, it was. Yeah, this is the correct move. Okay. Yep. Um, then you're attacking this. I can do this. Mm -hmm. Attacking that, but he's protected, so I can do this. Right. So now I will castle. And then I would castle. Okay, so now I'm going to do something different. I'm going to move my queen here because I really right. I don't want you moving this knight in this pawn to take all the space from me. Right, you're moving your queen, so right. um, you're. Um, I'm kind of curious if you can find the right move here. Challenge accepted. Um, oh, hold on. Hmm. So you moved your queen, and it's attacking. Uh, or it's it's. So I'm trying to apply more pressure. So maybe, I would move my well if i move here uh, that's not so good because there's this and this and this um maybe oh i bring my own queen no okay i'm not too sure actually okay uh, so so the move that you would play here is you actually capture this pawn oh really um why well, wh wh why do you think that it that you shouldn't capture? Well, I don't think I don't think I shouldn't capture, but my thought wasn't to capture there, uh, because which is good, just, which is good. Yeah, like you built a a strong defense, so now my thought is to also build, um, or my thought is that if I go in more, you're like more prepared against my offense, so I should, probably shouldn't go on the offense, but, um. Right, so 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 the reason you should do this is because you're actually going to be ahead. Because what happens if I capture this pawn? Um, if you capture that one, then, well, I could move my knight to the center. So if you remember what I said before, I was saying that you 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 never want to take this pawn. So there there must be a pretty good reason to capture this pawn instead of just randomly capturing it. I'm missing some. Oh my god! Right, exactly. You can take the queen. And you, you would win the game. Yeah. So that, oh, that's why it. if your opponent does this and you capture, let's say they take this bishop, you just capture back again and you're, you're ahead by one pawn because you have this extra pawn that you captured here. And you're, you're um, still, you're, you're just ahead. Okay. Let me see. How do I see that? Oh, I see. Okay, so... So it's, it's, if the queen goes on the same line as where your bishop is, basically. Then I take with my pawn. Right. So so let's say black moves the queen here. Because I want to push this pawn up. So can you uh, come up with a logical move here? Since there's well, since there was a plan before, can you maybe play the same plan? Um, You can't. Or there's no pawn to take anymore. Right, so you don't so, want to capture the pawn. So do you remember what the other idea was in this position? Take control of the center? Or yeah. How would you do me? that? Yeah, exactly. With my knight. Exactly. Now, let's just say I develop the bishop. Right. Um, I mean, I would just say, what up? Oh, well, well, remember, you've got oh. the control of the center, so you don't really want to remove this knight. You want your opponent to capture here. Oh, okay. Um... In that case, I would 
So I want this to happen. Mm hmm So so what you should play is you should remember you've got the knight developed, you got your king out of the middle of the board, and you also brought these bishops in. So how do you bring the rest of your reinforcements in? Um well then I can move my knight. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Right, exactly. And you, you move your knight and then you're just gonna push your push your pawn next move and play the same strategy. I thought you said not to move the the king side pawns. Well, in this case, it's a, it's a little bit different because you have the rook. But mainly, what I was saying is, don't push the pawn in front of your king. Okay. Mainly, okay. yeah. Normally speaking, you don't want to push the pawns, but because you put a knight in the center and the pawn will support the knight, it's actually completely fine. But normally, normally, norm, normally, you don't want to push the pawn in front of the king specifically if you can help it. Okay. Um, so when it's like middle game, it's, mm -hmm. this is where it gets really, I think, confusing for me. I never know like what to do or how, like, this is where all my time goes. I like take so long per turn because my brain is like trying to think of every thing left, right, what everywhere I could blunder and stuff. Right. So one of the reasons I'm trying to show you this is because it is pretty straightforward. For the most part, you, you just need to make sure that nothing is... You're not going to lose any of your pawns or lose like your knight or bishop in, in a bad exchange. So, so it, with this opening, very rarely do you end up in a situation like that where something is under attack. If black ever takes the pawn, let's say black takes, which way do you capture? This way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely perfect. Um. So, so, so the point is, let, let's keep going with this middle game just so you have an idea of what you're supposed to do. Let's say I uh, bring my rook over here. Welcome Raiders. Um Choose your Yeah, fate. well then I could watch the um, show or watch bring your the rook show. there. I could I would maybe just like move my thank queen you. up. Oh and by the way, thank you again to Hutch for the raid. Thanks for the raid with five hundred and eighty people. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So yes, yeyeah, so you can bring your queen up here, but actually the, the idea um is to push this pawn pawn again. This guy? Yeah. Um, okay, but if I push him, mm -hmm. he has no defense. Nothing's like helping him. Well, oh, actually, the, the, the point is that you have this really good knight here in this this, this pawn. Or you've got this really knight, good knight here in the center of the board, sorry. Yeah. And you're basically reinforcing the knight with both of these pawns. Yeah, but that's why I'm thinking, like, why would you move these pawns or, like, this guy when he's, like, defending this knight in his really good position? Well, the reason you do this is because the way that you continue to try and attack your opponent here is I'm going to give you a specific reason for playing this move. Is that Let's just say your opponent moves this rook here. Right. The pawn uh, supports the knight. So now what you can do is you can move this bishop up here. Whereas if we go back one move, let's say you move the bishop here. Uh, what would happen if you move the bishop? Um, um, nothing too bad, it seems. Well, uh, your opponent can actually capture this knight now. Oh, because the bishop was protecting him. Right. So, so what you do by pushing this pawn is, is you, you reinforce the knight here with both of these pawns and you free up your bishop so that you can move it to a different square. So like if your opponent moves the rook here, then you bring the bishop here and you line up this pin against the queen and the rook. So now I, I can't it. move the knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. I was confused. I realized that I thought you were saying to move this F4 one up. I thought we were explaining for some reason that that one goes to F5. No, realized, no, no, no. Yeah, the yeah, whole, yeah. No, so basically I, the whole point, if you just think about logically, is you want to put this knight in the center and you want the pawns to basically just, just support the knight completely here. Fate. Yeah, that makes sense. Watch I get that. Show, watch the show. So, okay, so now we'll keep going. So let's say rook D8 is played here. You go bishop h4. Um, yeah, is that because you're trying to put more pressure on the rook? Right. Yeah, the rook and the queen and black, again, still cannot remove this knight because your pawns are supporting it. And if black captures here, you, you take this. Take with, yeah. Bo both both pawns are good. This one's better because now your rook, your bishop, and your pawn just completely attack this knight. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Um, and it gives us movement towards the center. Right, so you're keeping an eye on everything here, and if black takes this pawn, what would your next move be? Um, then I would take his pawn. 
Exactly. Yeah. Well, the the main main thing behind that is I want to make sure that like you 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 remember to always take with the right pawn, and you clearly have that down. So that's very very good. So I'm just gonna play um, a move like this to attack your bishop. Quick question: If I'm on the left side of the board, though, is it take with the left pawn, like take towards the center in general? Well, specifically, what I what I referred to before was a position like this, where it's when you're going to get two pawns. When you get a formation where you have two pawns in front of each other, oh, this this like was that. where I was saying capture towards the center of the board. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. so so yeah, bad? go ahead. What's the question? Isn't it bad to have double pawns, or is it? Uh, not always, not always. It, it depends. Normally it's not great, but sometimes it, it's completely fine. And this is one of these situations where, where if, if black captures here, the concession for having these two pawns is that you gain an open line for your rook, basically. Okay. Oh, I see. Got it. All so, right. But, but remember that if you're like, it's very important if you, if you end up where you're going to have two, two pawns stacked, you always want to, um, you always want to capture towards the center. Okay, I get that. So if it was on the left side of the board, though, we would have captured to the other way. Okay, so let, let me give, give you an example. Let me, um, uh, well, it's a good example. Sorry, let me go back. Um, right, so I'll give, I'll give you an example. Let's say we reach some okay. position, some position like this. Okay. Which way would you capture the bishop? This way. Exactly, yeah, you just capture towards the center of the board. Absolutely. Um, so 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 yeah so you have that down completely so what was the question i was gonna oh I you moved you moved a bishop or you were threatening my bishop right oh, it oh. was it was this um let me find it was it was right here yeah yeah so then you moved your pawn to threaten my bishop um so i can respond with a few things i can either uh take with my knight take with my bishop but I don't like those because then I lose in the trade. I feel. Right. Right. So, um, um, let's see. Um, I could also take, oh, no, no, same situation. Um, ooh. Um, maybe I could just retreat. I would send my bishop backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe. Yeah, that's per that's exactly where you want the bishop because you still keep this uh you keep this 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 diagonal open for your bishop. Okay. Hell yeah! Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. So now I'm going to keep going so that you understand the 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 reason. So you got this bit so that you understand the straightforward plan if you keep going deeper into the game. Cuz even if you even if you got this position, you need to know how to continue attacking. So like in in this position, you you've reinforced the knight here in the center and you got the bishop on this good diagonal so now you want to try and really put pressure on this king and this pawn here um on h7 yeah um so i would pull out my queen you could do that but actually the best move to play here would be to move your rook up um okay um but rook bros we what about them well, what what you what you what you want to do here is you want to attack your opponent. You want to go for go in for the kill. Like if you think about this position, you look at your rooks. They're the, bo all all the rooks for both players are behind a lot of pawns. Right. So you want to you you want to try and bring the rook into the game here in a way that where you can attack your opponent. And your rooks okay. don't always need to be connected. By the way, they they don't always have to be right next to each other. Okay. Um. So you'd push your rook up, um, not because it wanted to be there, but because you want it to threaten, like, or is that specifically like the square you want it in? Well, it's because I have a specific square that I'm going to. So I'm going to keep pushing my pawn. Right. And Do then you see you somewhere where you can move your rook now? Uh, here? Right. You could move your rook here, and that's actually a very good move, but there's a better square you can move the rook to here exactly no, so let oh, me just oh. play another move okay do you see what um, the idea is with 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 the uh with the rook being here now uh the idea with the rook there is that um if i move my bishop my this whole rook threatens the king or right so are you familiar with the term uh removing a defender uh no okay so 
When you look at this position, this knight is a good defender. It guards this pawn here very nicely. Right. So we remove with our bishop. Right. So so when you capture and I capture back. Then I say. Oops. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Well, thought, you can take with your rook or the bishop. Okay, good. Okay, I thought of the bishop after I moved the rook. So, so both moves are good, but the point is that the knight was was defending this pawn, whereas now it's not defending the pawn anymore. So you're attacking the pawn with both the rook and the bishop. Okay, I get it. So this is basically the long-term plan that you want, if you can get it, is you, you want to get this knight in the center. So I'm going to play some other moves now. Let me, let me just, just to see if you remember this. Okay, let's push this pawn. Okay, push the pawn. Um, and then can't let's see i'm pushing my my knight into mm -hmm. the center. okay so i will go here okay um and so well um remember you want you you you're, you have a very set kind of plan so you want to reinforce everything right okay, so now you there. reinforce this knight right right okay so i'm just gonna play this move uh, right, so you're threatening my bishop, so I'm like, no. Nah. Right, okay, so now I'm just going to play some random moves. Okay, you did that well. Then I would say, hmm, interesting. Um, queen there. So remember, the, the reason that I'm showing this, this opening strategy is that the idea... It's about the idea and the, you want to play the same way as what we just looked at. Yeah. So, I mean, I like this bishop is, I'm keeping him in this line. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know if I want to move him. Uh, your queen is, oh, he's still, he's, they're all trying to like attack my king right here. Or not my king. Right. My but, king. but, but they're attacking the knight, but the knight is reinforced by multiple pawns. You see, this is why you want these pawns here. Cause if black ever captures the knight, you have two pawns and two pawns are always better than a bishop and a knight. So it's always reinforced. It's never where blacks can be able to capture this without losing a trade. Black can capture it three times, but you're going to lose uh, a knight and a bishop for like a bishop and one pawn or a bishop and two pawns. Okay. So maybe I can move this is maybe where I'd move my my rook but my rook is being you could blocked. but there's one other thing that you want to do here first before you do that which is you want to uh make sure all of your pieces are defended not defended oh, oh. sorry are developed I should say develop develop right here mm -hmm. okay so now I'm just going to play a, some sort of plan over here okay interesting uh so that that um well then I would maybe look at um i would well oh mm -hmm. okay so now i'm going to just protect this knight okay protect the knight um so what what was the plan the plan was to move this guy out right and what's the next rook move let's say i just move this pawn this is the next rook yeah move. exactly and if i push the pawn remove the defender right and then mm -hmm. yeah bo both moves are fine you can take with the rook take with the bishop but both moves are are good so so basically this is this this is what i think you should should play um and let's just say, I don't know, let's say E-Rob is actually watching this, which I'm pretty sure he's not. And yeah. Black were to play um, something without this pawn push. Let's say here Black pushes this pawn, okay? Right. Um, uh, then I would just, I mean, that's fine, right? Right. So now I'm going to play something a little bit different. Now I'm going to bring my queen out right away on this third move. Okay. Um well you're attacking this here um i oh aha uh -huh. yeah you could pl play this actually remember this from the previous example but i, I want you to actually not play this so what's okay, another way my, to defend this is this is my thought process 
Uh, wait a minute. Where's the hat point? Oh, well, right. Mm -hmm. So I'll go. Yeah, no, no, it's correct. It's correct. Cause you have to protect the pawn, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'll bring the knight out. No, sorry. It's, it's wait, this wait, pawn, the, this, this pawn, this pawn, this pawn. Okay. Yeah. So, so now I bring the knight out. Okay. Uh, he's attacking this. So I would want to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll do this. Um, hat. Right. Okay. Um, and then develop the knight. Nothing's mm -hmm. being okay. Done. Now let's say I capture the pawn here. Well, then I would capture that. Exactly. Exactly. Now I here I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to, or actually no, I'll just to make sure that you have the idea down completely. Let me push this pawn. Okay. You're pushing the pawn. Well, that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. because I will, let me think about this actually. You're pushing this pawn. So yeah. remember you have a very basic plan. Yeah. Did yeah. The, so you, you actually, you, you remember the right idea, but remember at the start of the game, you want to get the king out of the center of the board first before you try to attack in the middle. Right. So castling would be the, the mm -hmm. better move. Exactly. Okay. And so now if I castle. And then. Then that's when I could get this here. But he's defended with these guys. Right. Exactly. So so if black ever captures a knight, you can just capture back with the bishop or the pawn. Oh, Both. Okay. No, actually, if you want to take with the pawn, you can. It's the best move. I just assumed it wasn't as natural, but you, you can take with the pawn as well. You well, I didn't the... want to take with the bishop because the bishop is supposed to be. Oh, never mind. I was thinking this bishop because I want to keep this guy on this line. Right. So, so if you capture this way, which is actually this is the best move, by the way, because what you do is um, the the knight has to move, and now this 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 pawn becomes weak. So again, you would do sort of the same plan. You would bring your knight out. Um, right. Let's just say I play a move like this. So I'm attacking your bishop here. So where do you move the bishop? Where do I move the bishop? Um, I move him back. I say, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So now I'm going to bring the bishop in. Now this is a little bit different here because you can't really push the pawn and get the rook over as easily. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I see. Um, because now this kind of. So in in this position, what what you want to do is you want to do the other attack. So how do you try to attack? Because think about it this way: by putting this pawn here, the knight had to remove had to remove itself from the square and go all the way over here. Right. So, so now the, it's get... it's one of these pieces that's very far away from defending the king. So now, is there a way you can again try to create the checkmate? Hmm. I think I would. No, that's definitely not it. Wait, so we're talking about, uh, okay, we're saying that uh, the, the knight here, we want to target this spot? Well, what you want to do is you want to attack. So let, let, let me give you an example. Let's just say, um, what's a good example? I guess let's just say you were to capture with the bishop. Let's, let's reach some position like this. You'll notice in a position like this, y you can't really try to attack. The knight is guarding all these critical squares around the king. Right. Would we so, go for the, trying to remove him then? Like right. So now just or, think about, just look at this position for one second. Okay. Yep. And now let's, let's go back to, to this position. So do you see the difference? The knight is on, kind of on the other side of the board. It's off to the other side. It's over right. here instead of over here. Yep. So now what you want to do is you want to attack. Is, is there a way you can try to attack here? You can use this bishop and maybe another piece to, to, Threaten a checkmate? Yeah. The queen and the bishop. Right. So what's the right move here? Um, the right move is move the queen here. Exactly. Yeah. And now you threaten the checkmate on this h7 square. So now I'll just go a couple of moves further. So let's say black pushes the pawn to attack your queen. Um, not a problem. Checkmate! Are you sure? Uh, well, 
No, 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 not at all, actually, because um, your pawn is there. So can we rewind that? Right, so I, I, I cut off this this threat. So what you want to do right. here is now you try to make the checkmate again, but you stay on the offensive. You move the queen up here. Um. Yeah, yeah. so then I could... I'll make a move. So, so yeah. So what do you think you're... How, how do you try to attack? Because remember, your queen is very close to this pawn, but now your bishop kind of doesn't have any ways to help the queen checkmate. So now you want to try to bring... Bishop you could play this, but then your opponent would capture the bishop. So there's one oh. piece here that you can try to use to make a checkmate. I don't know if you've looked at checkmating patterns or not. Not really. But what but what you want to do is you want to bring the knight here. And I'm oh. just going to make a random move like this. Okay, and Four. I take. Oh, well, then I take. Okay, and if I take. I'm ahead by a rook, so you better have something good here. Oh, um, uh oh, um, you took my knight. Where's my knight? Is he dead? It's off the board. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Um, well, then that's not good. So you're saying I can checkmate you here? Mm-hmm. By force, actually. There's nothing I can do to stop it. What if I um, do this? Okay. Okay, so now you're threatening that. Um, if I do this, no, you can eat my queen. So that's bad. If I go here, then you can eat my bishop. If I go here, then you can... That's it. Checkmate. But you're not attacking my king. No, no. Now I say I take your pawn. And what's your next move? Uh, well, then I would take your... Oh. Oh. Wait, what? I can't take your... Oh, my gosh. I think you checkmated me. Wait a minute. So I have to do this. Yeah, thanks for the game. That was fun. You lost. Uh, Better um, luck next time. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> any, anyway, yeah. So, so the point is you do have a checkmate here. But remember what a checkmate is. It's when you attack your opponent's king. So you threaten to capture the king, but your opponent can't, can't do anything about it. So there's actually a forced checkmate here, which is you move your queen up to this square. Oh, my God. Okay. What and your I bishop guards the queen. Oh, I see. I move the bishop instead. Right, and the bishop doesn't attack the king at all. You're only attacking a rook. Oh, okay, got it. So, so what you do it. is you move the queen up, and this is checkmate because you're attacking the king. With your queen, you're going to take the queen king next move, but your bishop protects the, uh, protects the queen. Get it. I get it. So this is one thing I think... Remember that these patterns where your bishop and your queen, your bishop guards your queen. So you bring the queen in and you move it next to the king. But as long as um, as long as you have a piece that supports the queen, this will always be checkmate. Oh, okay. This is an, a general checkmate pattern. Yeah, this is a very important pattern. To remember, like this is this is one example. Um, like the the other example was something like if if you get uh if you if you get this this sort of thing as well. Like the queen is right next to the king. But as long as the queen is supported by like a bishop or a knight, or for example, let me go back to like this position. If I capture, again, this would be checkmate. As long as you I have the it. queen. Mm -hmm. Oh, so as long as the queen is in a piece right next to the king, um, and then if that king takes a queen, there's a piece that you can take the king, king with. Right, and it's checkmate. So this is why when you think about think about it, like using your queen to make a checkmate, you make you want you need another piece. You need like two pieces to coordinate. You need one of the pieces to help use the queen to attack got it that makes perfect sense yes so so that that's that i mean this is probably what i would recommend i mean okay. maybe just watch the bob but remember that the the main point is you want to bring your bishop out early then you push the pawn and, and then you create the hat develop the bishop the knight and get the king out of the center of the board and that's just like the first six seven moves and um and your opponent should not really be able to do anything that will distract you from from this plan what if he castles long? Okay, well, it'd be very hard to do this. Um, okay, I'm trying to think of a setup where Black does. Okay, let's say Black brings his bishop out. He mirrors you. 
Let's say you push this pawn, and now he brings his knight out. You bring your knight out here. Black pushes the queen. So now, what would your next move be again? Um, hat. Exactly, yeah. And so now I'm going to cast my king out of the center of the board here. And what you should play here, because this is, this is very non-standard and it's not natural, is now you want to push this pawn ahead on the queen side. Because now that your opponents move the king to this side, you want to just push all your pawns and try to attack all the pieces immediately. And you have this bishop on this nice diagonal as well. Whoa. Okay, so I wouldn't try to, like, do everything the other way. Yeah, now you would delay it and you would just go all in. You would try to attack because your opponent has, has decided where to put their king very early on in the game. Okay, and so I just go all offense. Right, so let's just say I push this pawn here. Now what you do is you bring this knight in, first of all. Let's say I move my knight here. Now you push the pawn to push this knight out. Right. And now if black moves the knight to the edge of the board, you bring the queen out. Okay. So black has to support the knight with the pawn. And now you'd bring the knight here. And what happens is now you attack, and let's say your opponent captures. You go queen here check first. King here. And what's your next move? Aha. Uh -huh. It's my next move is... I want to say, um, I'm thinking, and I think I I got it. Oh, no, I lost it. <laughs> uh, well, the bishop. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm playing the wrong color. Sorry, I'm white. Okay, sorry. Um, hmm. Well, uh, this. No, no, no. Now, no. This, you've got the right idea, but remember, when you try to put the queen next to the king, there has to be a support. Right. I thought there was no pawn here. Right. So, uh, okay, now that you know that, what's your next move? Um, There has to be a support. I'm looking for pieces that could support it. Um, But I... Oh. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I thought it was this, but then that pawn can't. Well, ideally, maybe here, but that's can't move like that. Um, hmm. Uh, is this something to do with my queen? One, one thing you should always be looking at very closely is if there's anything that you can capture for free. There has to be something I'm missing. Blaring. Um probably right in front of my face and I'm missing it well can my knight go in here here um uh, my bishop no um uh, my rook uh, nope uh my queen um there's something that is really obvious that I can capture mm -hmm. frick what the heck is it um well, it's not my bishop to this guy. Um, right. So it's not my bishop. Um, it's not my pawn. It's not this pawn. Uh, it's not this bishop. It's not this rook. It's not the king. Well, it has to be the queen. Or my... It's not my rook. <laughs> my chat is molding right now but i can't tell <laughs> what it is um it's gotta be good oh <laughs> i did it yeah you capture so now let's say i make a move like this what's your next move um okay well i think i would okay my first thought is maybe bishop there but you could just we would just trade bishops right um and i don't know if that's so do you remember what you wanted to do on the previous previous move that you couldn't play yeah my goal is to checkmate you here and i want to get to a point where my queen can get next to you while i have a supported piece right while yeah so um my thoughts are uh actually i out oh, oh my gosh oh my gosh okay checkmate. Right. not quite oh. i go over 
I forgot. Um, let's think about this. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to get to another point in which you are... Hmm. Well, what if I... I'm confused whether I should be going after checkmate here. Um, oh, frick. What if I go here? No. Remember you want to be able to attack the king with a piece where you're threatening to capture it next move? Is there a way you can do that? Say that one more time. You remember checkmate is when you attack the king. So you're you're trying you're gonna capture the king next move if the king can't move. Yeah, so maybe queen here, because I'm attacking, but then your king can just go here. Oh no, 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 no! Checkmate! Right, this is checkmate because the king has no squares. I can't run to the, the other side of the board because the queen is in the way, and I can't move to this side because then your queen would just capture the king. Oh my god, for some reason it's so hard to see that for me. Right, so I think the main thing is just remember that um, that when you get this queen close to close to king and then you have another piece that supports it, always look for the ways where you can attack the king, where you threaten to capture the king on the next move. Okay. So that that's what I would recommend. So if we go back to the basics, just, just very quickly, one last little brief look. Uh, okay. If your opponent tries to castle the king this way, what do you do? Go on the offense. With? Boom. Right, and now you start, you try you try to bring all your pieces over to this side of the board, and you don't really worry about getting your king out of the center immediately. And then if I do the other one, let's just say I play normal moves. What's your next move? Oh, I see. Um, you know, then I would just say I start building the hack. Remember the order, though. The order is important. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Um, uh, the order. Uh, the order. Oh, yeah. Here. Right. So I will just play here. Then I finish up the hack. Mm-hmm. And if I go okay. here. Well, then I say, oh, here. Rem remember, though, when I want oh. when I want to exchange these bishops, you don't really Sorry. want. Just take a second. I, that I moved. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Just kidding. Um, wait. So it's not move the pawn. Hold on, hold on. So when you're trying to attack my bishop now, um, that's when I would. I, I can't just support it with another pawn. Um, no. I could I could go Remember when when you offer the bishop trade what you do is you drop the bishop back. Right. So if your opponent tries to exchange the bishops, what you want is let, let me let me try to simplify it. So if you end up in a position like this, you, these pawns are not very attractive. You have two pawns in front of each other, they aren't really supporting each other, okay? Right. So if you move the bishop back and your opponent captures, you'll notice that your pawns are still very well connected. They're all kind of together. Nothing has been disrupted. Right. So that that's why if your opponent offers the exchange offers to get rid of the bishops, like the, this this trade, you want to make sure you move the bishop back um, instead of leaving it on the square. Oh and then yeah, I ran into the same problem. I, before I, I I had the same thought process. Bring the bring the pawn forward, but we don't want to leave the the. The, the king exposed, the yeah. right. So the way to build the defense is to pull him back. Right. So so you do this, and then if I castle my king? Uh, you castle your king. That's fine. Um, then I would say, yeah, then I would continue building. Right. Okay. And now I will just bring my knight here. That's fine. Um, then I will, I will do this. Right. And now I will just push this pawn. Okay, that's fine. I'll castle. I will go here. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, well, that's fine as well. Um, so remember what the idea was? Yeah. The idea is to bring my knight forward into the center right here. Just making sure it's safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will go Is here. Supported? Okay. That's fine. Um, I think I will support him more. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll push the pawn. Okay, you push your pawn. That's okay. Because um, um, everyone's supported. So I think I will keep 
Mm -hmm. Okay, I will bring the rope over. Okay. You Everything you've done is right so far. I just want to see if you can finish finish it with a flourish here. Okay. So then, um, well. Remember, you want to attack. So you, right. you create the reinforcement. You got this knight here, and now it's reinforced by the pawns. Right. I need to remove your defender. I'm going to push my... I'm debating whether to... Okay, so I know that this guy, right? This is the... He needs to stay here. Mm -hmm. um, but this guy is defending that guy. So I need to either... Oh, I, I think I want to push my bishop mm -hmm. there. Oh, remove the defender. Okay. So remember, you want to remove the defender... But if you were to capture right away, I'm just going to capture back with my knight, and I have a new defender. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. So. So there are a couple moves that are good here, but remember how how do, how, how are you trying to attack this pawn? Um, with uh, with my bishop. Right, but you, you need more pieces to attack it, because one bishop's not enough to, to oh, attack uh, this rook? weak pawn. Yeah, so what's your move? Uh, maybe here. Mm-hmm. Okay, and if I push the pawn. Oh, I see. Because you could take my bishop, maybe. Right. So, so remember, you have I to move I your have bishop. To... But... Oh, um, I can move him back. Mm -hmm. Right. So now I will try to do this. It's like a dance, like back and forth. And so you're, like I have to protect my pieces, but also know when to go on the offense. And, then... yeah, and now to sorry. finish the plan, what's, your, what's the last move? Uh, the last move is to, well, maybe this. Exactly. Yeah. You, 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 you basically are remembering more or less everything. Um, and yeah, now you're going to, now you're going to probably remove the Knights in, in the next move or two. And you're going to win this pawn here, um, down on eight, seven. Well, a question. Cause so if I, the reason uh, is because if I take the, you know, remove the defender, right? Even, even if you take back with your knight, it doesn't matter because I have, um, uh, I have lots of pieces attacking you. Well, actually the, the defender that you want to remove here, let, let me just make a random move is you don't want to capture right away. Cause the, the one knight still guards the pawn, even though you attack with your bishop and your rook, I still have the one knight guarding the pawn. Mm -hmm. So the way that you would remove this defender is you would capture this knight first. If your opponent captures with the knight, then you win the queen. Oh. Okay. So then your opponent has to capture with the queen instead. And now you take the knight, black captures, and now you just take the pawn. And next move, you're going to bring your queen up and you're going to create all kinds of checkmates with the queen, the rook, and the bishop from long distance. Okay. I, I, okay, I get it. I think so. I'll rewatch the VOD back a few times. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think out, out of all the people I, I've, I've seen, like, do lessons and, and everything, you definitely have the best memory by a wide margin. Because even though you're clearly very inexperienced at chess, you're remembering, like, the sequences and the ideas very, very quickly. So if you, like, go back and watch the VOD, I, I, I don't think you'll have any problems tomorrow remembering it and probably getting something very similar to this in your game. Okay, I'm. There is a ch chance that I just um, completely melt down during it and forget everything. Um, so try not to be do too disappointed when you see that happen. No, no, no it's <laughs> fine. I mean, I think the main thing is just try to remember the the the. Try, when you go back and look at it, just try to remember what the idea was. It's not even the specific moves, but it's the idea. Yeah, I get important. it. It's like build the hat and you know with for the bishop, and then develop towards the center, especially the knight. Mm -hmm. uh, and then. Um, and then go on the and, attack. Yeah, go on the attack. And then once he castles, go on the attack for the king. Okay. Right. I see. Yeah. I, uh, you think this works in random games too? Yeah, it's it's I, I think that's one thing that I would say is like now that you've now that you've looked at this, uh this will be something that will work in all your games that you're playing with the white pieces. So definitely um this will work for both your white games. Oh, okay, I see. It's just a, okay. it's a set system, but it's it's like a, a meta that's just gonna work every time you could play it every single game and you'll have no problem and i would recommend doing that if you play like a couple games tomorrow just like play the system just play it play it play it and and um and you'll you'll become more familiar with it
Okay, and then what if I'm um, the black side? Uh, ask ask me about that after your first game. Oh, okay, for sure. Because because no. I guess what I what I would say is that you, tomorrow I think I was looking at your group. You you have one of the tomorrow is probably going to be one of your best chances to surprise your opponent and get out of the gate really strong, like with a victory. So that's why I'm only showing you something with white for okay. right now. I heard that you said that Erob versus me would be a clown fiesta. <laughs> well. Okay, but like when I say, I mean, I, I don't think, I, I don't think, unlike certain other matchups, I don't think like you're clearly an underdog. I think you could beat him. I think there's a good chance for both players to win. So that's why, that that's why, I mean, it's very interesting and why I want you to have a good, good plan for the game. And also I'm not helping you, Rob, so uh, I'd much Ooh. rather see you win. Ooh, okay. All right. Well, I would like to say thank you very much for taking the time out of your day. To give me a lesson, I'm going to go practice this strategy over and over and over and over again. Great. Perfect. Hope you enjoyed it. All right. I did. It was very helpful. I liked it because she gave me like defensive. The her whole lesson was very defensive focused. And then yours is like, go on the attack. And I really struggle with going on the attack. So I, I be aggressive. Like Try to kill your opponent. That's 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 what chess is about. You, you want to uh, you want to destroy whoever you're playing against. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Akaru. Appreciate it. No problem. It. Hope you enjoyed it. All right. Have a great rest Bye. of your stream. Bye. Thanks.